Hi, I'm Kelly Robbins Hicks. I am a filmmaker based in New York City, and I am here with the amazing, wonderful, talented, and brave women who have produced this groundbreaking film, Year One. Erin Bagwell and Diana Matthews. Hi. Hi. Thanks yeah. for doing with the, us with this, Kelly. We're like, I was reading your bio earlier and, you know, we're friends, but also I, I read your bio to my husband and I was like, can you believe this is like what we get to do and what we get to talk about? And um, Diane and I are so in awe of you and the work that you do. And I feel like in a lot of ways, we're like really, really indie in the filmmaking world and you're like an actual filmmaker in my eyes. So I, we're so honored to have this conversation with you. There's no such thing, but thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you guys. I think the, the film is incredible. I think it's so important um, as a mother and kind of even kind of still consider myself a new mother. Um, it's, it's just things that everyone should know um, because motherhood is something that, that literally affects all of us. Like you, you only get here through a mom. So um, we all sort of need to have a little bit better context and understanding about what that, what that means. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this. Um, so my first question is, when did you have the idea, Erin, that you wanted to tell this story? Yeah, I mean, I really, in the beginning, was filming my daughter and I was actually um, in May and it was my birthday. And I thought, what a cool thing for me to, Ginny was about three months old. What a cool thing to like call my DP, who is a friend of mine, a videographer, Mary Perino, and have her come over and just take some really beautiful footage of us. Um, I'm a blogger and I was thinking at the time, maybe I could use the stills in my writing or you know, in some creative way. And it'd be really amazing to have this footage of my little girl and I. Um, but when we were together, I had started this little like notepad in my phone of like different topics that I was like, I just want to remember how this feels right now at three months. And I had written like a page of things. And when she came over, she filmed us for a couple of hours. And then, you know, I asked her if it would be okay if we did like kind of a really candid interview where I just wanted to like talk at her about different things and nuances that I was feeling. And I'm sure I cried, you know, three times during that conversation. And that was kind of it. And I kind of like put it away and, you know, thought it was really great footage and didn't really have any other kind of idea or plan for it. And then a couple of like a month or two went by and Ginny started like crawling and moving and just hurt. She felt like a different baby, you know, than she was. And I was like, wouldn't it be really interesting if I could document kind of this process and this journey and my relationship to her as it changes, um, you know? And so the film kind of, you know, I did kind of like a 12 minute cut that I showed Diana and I said, you know, what do you think of this idea and this concept? Does this feel like something? And then I think we met at the Cos Cafe to kind of go over what a movie would look like, what it would feel like, how I would pay for it, you know, kind of those nuts and bolts. And then I guess that like totally segues easily into you, Diana. What, what did you think when she first, I guess, brought it up and, and, I guess, talk about some of the, um, the feelings you had when you watched that first cut. Yeah, I mean, I think Erin um, had been telling me that she was like filming with Mary and she was like processing um, kind of through these interviews, like what she was going through. And I was just really, I, I think what I wanted to be off the bat was just like very supportive of it. I felt um, I had kind of been, just because Erin and I were, have been so close for so many years, I witnessed her experience trying to get pregnant, then getting pregnant, and then her pregnancy journey, and then becoming all the way through to becoming a mom. And 
I knew how important it was to her and I knew how intense it was for her and how emotional it was for her. So when she said she was like creating these kind of almost like vignettes, it was like, really to me, I was like, great. Like I know Erin at her heart of hearts is a storyteller. And I was like, this is something she needs to process. And I think that um, at first I was just really, you know, not knowing what it was gonna be, just kind of like encouraging her to keep going. And then when I watched that first cut, I was like, we have to make this movie. <laughs> I was like, there's so much here. And I'm not a mom, but I just felt so deeply connected to what Erin was saying. And I just knew that other women had to hear this, other men had to hear this. And um, yeah, I just got from the moment I saw it first cut, I was just like, we're all in, we have to make this. And so from there, I guess, did you have a why in mind, Erin, when you were beginning? Or was it just, I've got the time, I've got, I kind of want to work on this relationship or was there a bigger question you wanted to talk about or answer at the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I think in the beginning, it was pretty clear in my brain that I wasn't sure that I knew, you know, what I was doing or if I had what it takes to be a mom. That's a the question. That's like the first line that comes out of my mouth in the film. Um, and that was pretty early on in the cuts of like, this is a question I'm trying to solve. But I think my relationship to my motherhood journey changed drastically when I learned I had postpartum depression and gave me context for the thoughts and the feelings and the experiences and the anxiety um, and just all those big things. So I think that it really, it deepened the story that I wanted to tell. I think in the beginning I was, you know, curious about motherhood and, you know, I had all these things I wanted to share, things that I wanted people to tell me as a new mom. And then the postpartum depression piece really became, okay, how do I heal from this? How do I get better? How does my relationship to my daughter and to myself, you know, how does it grow? How do, how do we continue to bond? Um, and it really felt like kind of a life or death. Like I need to figure this out. And, you know, I'm a person who processes a lot of her stuff through art. And so the film became very therapeutic for me to kind of go through all of this and, and understand it on a deeper level. And actually one of the really interesting things too is, you know, when you're a mom at three months, it's so different when you're a mom at five months, you know, seven months, a year, it's, it's a totally different ball game. And so it was also such a gift for me to be able to see myself at, at three months at, you know, one or two weeks and have compassion for myself and say, oh my God, that was the worst. Like those first three weeks are crazy. Like, of course I didn't know what I was doing. And just, I was able to find so much grace in watching myself go through it and, and having the space and distance to say, okay, I'm in a better place now you know, I have a little bit more of a handle. I mean, I think motherhood is like a moving target always. Um, but that was a really interesting part of the process as well. Diana, as her friend and producer and longtime collaborator, when you saw the footage and you could see, you know, that she was obviously struggling, that she was going through a lot, maybe even more than she'd shared with you as a friend, what was that like to see? And what was your reaction when you, when, you, when you saw it or felt it? Yeah, um, it was really intense. I think the process of this was just really intense because of the therapeutic aspect of it. We didn't know what we were making and we had no, the unknown was just so huge. Like Aaron and I would have meetings where it was like, okay, I'm filming with Mary on Saturday. What do I need to get? What footage should I get? We're going to the park or like, and it would just be these conversations around like, well, where are we going? Like, what are we telling? Like, how are you feeling? And like, oftentimes our meetings, which were supposed to be like pre-production meetings would be more so about like something that happened the week prior that Aaron needed to like talk about. So the fact that this film was so personal and really happening in real time, which is, you know, we were filming Jenny's first year as it was unfolding kind of meant that I felt so immensely privileged to be a part, kind of have this front row seat of Aaron's 
first year of motherhood. Um, and it was something that I think once we named the postpartum depression element of it, it was like, okay, like there was kind of, the, I remember there's just this moment where Aaron kind of stopped being my partner and was my friend and somebody I love. And oftentimes we swapped those hats out a lot. And it was kind of just this constant negotiation of like, we're making a film, but this is also a very important and intense time of your life that I feel immensely grateful to be trusted with. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really beautiful. And um, you're a really good friend because you put your friendship before the movie, which I'm glad you did, but I'm also glad you guys stuck it out because <laughs> it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful film. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the movie itself. In the talk about postpartum, and you share, you know, pretty clearly your your journey and, and how you sort of realized it. And then Sal was able to help you sort of, I guess, kind of maybe anchor you to really be like, it's okay, let's figure this thing out. Um, but what the film kind of then becomes a little bit about that, right? It's about Jenny's first year, but then it's about how do you as a mother parent with postpartum depression, but then also just like find your identity with, within that. Um, and what does that mean for your identity, I guess? Yeah. Um, and so I guess if you can just extrapolate a little bit more about how your why for making the film sort of changed once you discovered you had postpartum depression. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is, um, and I think one of the most important scenes in the film um, as a survivor of PPD is the conversation that I have with my therapist. You know, it's okay that you're wrestling with kind of how do we cope with this now? And what's the narrative now of my motherhood? Um, and I love what Melissa says about finding compassion, being an example of compassion, and kind of just leaving space for it to just not be wrapped up in a bow. You know, it doesn't, at a year, you're not like, I didn't want people to be like, well, at a year, I'm gonna be cured. You know, everything's gonna be perfect. I, I really kind of wanted that tension to exist still in the film. Um, and I, I really wanted women who've, who've had it to, to know it's okay to kind of be in this gray space now. And I think ultimately to know that they can heal and that they can forgive themselves for it and that doing so makes them goddamn warriors. Because I think you don't know how horrible it is unless you're out of it. And you can look back and say, oh my God, like, like when I think about it now, I'm like, I, like truly like 2020 was the greatest year of my life. Like that's the level of <laughs> how horrible the first year was, like truly. Um, and I think when we can give women the power to own that and to understand it and to harness it and to just hold on if they're feeling all these things to know it will pass, um, you know, that's the real why to make women feel seen in this experience. I would also say people are truly struggling and they're, they're feeling like they don't have the words and something just doesn't feel right in their gut like go see a therapist and don't see any therapist, see a postpartum specialized therapist. Because I also sat across the couch of somebody who was like, this is just motherhood. And they didn't, you know, know the signs to look for and they didn't um, know how to talk about it or care for people. So I think, you know, better to be safe than sorry if people are feeling a certain kind of way after watching the film um, or listening to this conversation. Um, a thousand percent postpartum depression can last for two to three years if untreated. This is not something like the baby blues that just goes away after two to three weeks. So definitely get it checked out. And then I guess talk a little bit about what the post experience was like um, and then how you guys sort of navigated that because I'm, I know how old Jenny is because my son's about the same, exact same age. <laughs> um, how you guys navigated doing the post in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Diana it talked a little bit about this of our kind of our friendship and our relationship. And I do want to give like a little bit of backstory. So Diana and I worked together on my last film, Dream Girl. 
Um, and we also co-host, uh, co-hosted a podcast together with over a hundred episodes, um, where we go through, you know, feminist media. That's how we know you random acts of flyness was fabulous. Your producers came on and, um, you shared the story of, of, of making it. Um, and then Diana also is an integral part of my newsletter and me sharing and writing and expressing myself in that way. And so there is nobody that knows my voice and kind of the stories I want to share and the perspective that I have, you know, then Diana, they're at like, truly, um, I feel like the, the luckiest, um, you know, producer because Diana is so easy to work with and she just gets what I'm trying to create and make. Um, and so a lot of the post for us really was figuring out the words to say, you know, this film is kind of like a diary. Um, Diana called it a memoir of, you know, my experience. And so Diana and I worked really, really hard on writing, like, what are the words we want to say, you know, and, and trying really not to waste anything. Yeah, it was kind of a situation where it was like, Aaron would take a cut at writing, send me the scripts, I'd read, then we'd jump on a call to chat through, and I remember just striking, like, whole paragraphs, and just, like, being like, say this simply, say this simpler, what are you trying to say, what are you getting at, and we just, like, cut, 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 until we finally got to exactly the feeling or exactly the sentiment or well, exactly I would hide behind like the universal we we <laughs> parents feel this way and Diana was like no what do you feel I and I would have to like own what I was saying and I was like oh okay yeah. <laughs> um and Aaron was also moving in the midst of trying to finish this movie <laughs> in the midst of a pandemic so we would often be like I think you like called me from cars sometimes you know we get in calls in the morning, we get in calls late at night, like it was just the classic, like figuring out any pockets to kind of work on it and keep it moving. Yeah, well, I also didn't have any consistent childcare during the pandemic. So we made this movie is totally made during nap time, bedtime, yeah. after hours, 100%. Nap time productions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so something else I really wanted to ask was, and not that you should speak for him, but you are married to him <laughs> and you live with him. Yeah. What was Sal's- I'm happy to speak for him. <laughs> I guess at first, what was his take when you told him that you wanted to do this? Um, you know, he was a little scared. He was a, he was a lot scared. And I think mostly because of how much time and energy and money it takes to make a movie. It's a huge, big, you know, sure bottle. And I was already kind of like, I know an investor we can talk to. And I was kind of, I was on like step 20. And, I, and then I just told him we we're on step one. And I think that was a bit overwhelming just in general. You know, I think it's, um, it's a process to be married to an artist who, you know, doesn't have a nine to five and, that's a whole thing. But um, I think once he started watching the cuts, everything kind of changed and, you know, the excitement and the energy of making it and, and doing the music together was really fun um, and really challenging, but, and really emotional, but like such a joy. And, um, it's a weird part of like my love language that I have to like work with people. That's like how I express or something, you know, Diana's testament to that and, and Sal and I to have that relation working relationship. Um, and it's really lovely. And I, and I feel really grateful for it. And um, I, I think his moments in the film really also help anchor and balance it in a really great way. And um so yeah, I think it was a bit of a roller coaster at first of just getting on board with the idea, but then he really was all in. And how does he like seeing himself on camera? Oh, I think he's, I mean, he's a rock star. So he really, he's, you know, he's, he assumes he should have fans and I'm, he, it's, you know, there's no, he's not a shy person in that way, so. As an artist and a mother who's struggling with postpartum depression and a new mom 
we see you struggle with the idea of when you decide to put Ginny in daycare. Um, and I guess talk a little bit about what that was like, why you decided to do it when you decided to do it, and um, what that's like still going forward for you as an artist and a mom. Actually, that was um, like the, one of the most emotional things that I, when I rewatched the film this week that I really felt because that scene embodies to me kind of this moving forward phase of our relationship of me, you know, kind of going back to work and, um, you know, focusing more on my career. And with the pandemic, um, I went back to being a full-time caregiver and we took Ginny out of daycare and we ended up moving and um, I ended up not going back to work in the traditional sense, but getting the opportunity to make this film, which is work in a different way. Um, it's work. It, it's work. Yeah, of course. Um, but it was really painful actually to watch that scene and to feel like in my mind, I really, I wanted to have a job. Like I wanted the end of the movie to be, you know, I have a job and she's in daycare and I'm moving forward with my life. And, um, I, I still don't have that <laughs> two and a half years later. Um, I'm still figuring that piece of it out. And so, um, yeah, it was, it, it wanted, it, I wanted it to feel like a resolution, but I think in the same way, my conversation with my therapist, you know, it's also nice not to have things tied up in a bow, you know, not to have that perfect resolution. Um, you know, as we know with this year, people, you know, went back to work, didn't go back to work, did homeschooling, didn't do, I mean, everybody is just doing their best this year. Um, and so that has to be enough, but yeah, the daycare scene, I, I love that scene. I love Sal's pep talk to Ginny as she's getting ready, you know, the stress and the nerves of it all. Um, so yeah, it's, we'll see, you know, she actually just started another day, part-time daycare this this week. So, you know, we could be moving back in that direction. We'll, we'll see. And I remember like when we were making the movie and we both had the conversation of like, how the hell are we going to end this thing? <laughs> like, where are we going? Um, cause obviously we had the first birthday party, but we were like, no, like we got to like wrap this up somehow, you know, in some kind of way. And I remember Aaron, we were really obsessed with like getting you a job and getting in Jenny and daycare and like as if we could like control the universe of like, employment and like yeah. capturing this all for the documentary and it was like it ended up being really beautiful that it just was you know this as you said this like unresolved but also very real and honest ending that just kind of comes to which is um yeah, I, I love, I love that moment. I rewatched the film today and I was like, oh my gosh, the daycare conversation. It was like, feels so long ago. I also love like the, like, it's interesting. I think the energy shifts when you see Sal and I together without the baby too. Like it's the first time in the film that you see us alone. And I think that's also, you know, such a powerful kind of idea of creating space for yourself. You know, that I, I think it's empowering, you know, to see, you know, my character, me in the film, you know, in the coffee shop by herself, you know, working on something, typing away, you know, moving forward. I think, you know, there is such power in creating those moments for ourselves. Um, and so I, I do, I feel really happy with the way the film ends. I love Sal's pep talk too, it's amazing. And I also do want to give a shout out too, to the, the conversation that, um, the mother circle that you were in to be able to hear other women's perspectives. Um, that's another huge favorite part of my, of the film, you know, where we kind of get out of my head a little bit and we get to kind of hear other women's experiences. And I think there's such a nice relief too, that also happens for the audience of like, you know, this isn't a burden that she's just carrying. Like these are, you know, conversations and nuances and everybody's kind of figuring it out. I loved, I loved that scene and the conversation that you added to it. And, um, I love that piece that you said about karma, about when things are really, really, really hard and they're really hard for a long time. Something so good is on the other end. And I feel like, especially after a year that we have had, like we all 
you know, need that mantra like stapled to our foreheads. That landed so different for me watching the movie today. I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, that needs to be written down and put on every coffee mug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, the good is right there. It's, and it's going to be so good. It's going to be so, so, so good. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, ladies. This is great. Kelly, thank you so much. This was truly um, wonderful to get together with you gals and to talk about this movie. Um, I know how crazy everyone's schedules are, so it, it means the world. And, um, and thank you for being in the film, um, for watching cuts before it came out, giving me you know, your creative feedback and, and for doing this. Um, it's been amazing. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's an honor as a mother, like I said, like whatever I can do to help somebody else. <laughs> the thing that motherhood has taught me, everything is temporary. And every day is a day towards easier. Like one day he'll be nine and his older brother will be 11. And like, that's crazy. <laughs> none of this will be, this will be such a distant memory. And the things that are hard today will like, it's silly to me. And I also have this sort of idea of like, I guess sort of karma and like, when things are really, really shitty, and especially when they're really, really shitty for a long time, I just keep telling myself, there is something so right. good yeah. on the other side. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It is going to be amazing. <laughs> and I'm going to like, in that goodness when it comes.